Hi, Chris Murray here. Welcome to this tutorial series on creating a Minecraft sword that we're then going to 3D print. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the modeling skills needed to create a sword of this nature, add some geometric detail to it. Even though we're 3D printing it, we are going to go ahead and add materials just because we can. We're going to clean up the geometry and then prepare it to be sent over to a 3D printer for printing. This tutorial will be posted in multiple videos, so be sure to check out the links at the end of this video for links to the other videos in this series. So I'm going to start off by setting some of my grid and snap settings. I'm going to set this to grid, and we're going to just create a plane here so that we can apply some reference artwork to it. The thing I like about this sword is that even though it looks pretty simple and should seemingly be a very simple thing to create, in order to get it right for 3D printing, which is our ultimate goal with this, it needs to be um, you know, a watertight model. And, and so we actually do have to use quite a bit of different types of modeling tools within 3ds Max. So right size we'll go ahead and uh, just drop here now what I'm looking at is the s amount of grid uh, lines that are um, gonna be basically available to me while I'm modeling this thing so before it was really huge uh, 70 is too small 200 centimeters looks to be about right uh, it's just fine with me I'm gonna right click here and choose to zero this out and what this will ensure is that I have grid lines um, all uh, evenly spaced. So I've dragged a reference art from Windows Explorer right onto the geometry. That's one of the nice things you can do, you just drag it right on. And you can see that uh, I'm going to position this, um, uh, just I'm lining up the graphic on the plane object. I'm looking at um, to the best of my ability, going to line up the, the various graphic elements with grid points. Now, this won't be perfect because obviously the graphic was made in some other program. And um, so really, this is just kind of a get close type of process at this point. Now, we're going to be using a shape here. So I'm going to go get my line tool. And we want uh, to take advantage of our... Um, uh, preset settings here. So I want to make sure that it's set to corner and corner. And I'm holding down the control key and clicking. And what this allows me to do is create straight lines. And since every one of these lines is a 90 degree turn, this is a very advantageous way to create these. So I'm holding down the control key. And I'm just moving these around and um, just getting them close enough for right now. We're going to go in and do another little bit of editing. So I'll just go ahead and let this process finish out, and then we'll come back and clean these up. Okay, so now that I'm about to finish this, as soon as I get to the last vertex, I'll click on Close Spline, and this gives me a closed spline. So now if I go to Wireframe View, you can see there is our spline that we've created that represents the outline of our sword. Now what I need to do though is I need to go in and up these vertices. You can see that some of them don't exactly match the artwork. Now it's really important here to use um, to select two vertices at a time because I want to make sure all those lines remain straight. And I also want to use my axis constraints. So you'll notice that I'm you know, using um, the, either the X or Y axis. In this case right there is the Y axis and here's the x-axis and I'm just using these to realign these based uh, just visually based upon the reference artwork so obviously my model will be representative of the reference artwork even if it isn't even if each one of those line segments isn't exactly the same length so we'll go ahead and let this process complete again this is just clean up before we do anything and it's also important to kind of have the end goal in mind. We're headed towards polygons with these things. The more efficient I can be at this stage, uh, meaning well, touching as few vertices as possible or, or just maintaining a lot of the uh, clarity of that, that's, that's, this is the place to do that. Okay, now when we get to the last set of vertices, you'll notice that these aren't straight at all because they're, they're two different points and uh, they, weren't used, they weren't created using the control um, method. So what we're going to do here is just basically eyeball these. It's okay if these are off a little bit. 
you'll notice that um, I'm looking at the wireframe mode to really see how off I am and uh, just make a, a visual adjustment here. That'll be just fine for uh, three, the purposes of 3D printing or polygonal modeling. So I have a couple more here. Just going to go around the end of the handle here and we'll just uh, clean these up. Okay, so now that we're coming to the end of the spline cleanup, uh, we can begin to start thinking about the next step, which is going to be creating the actual 3D geometry out of this spline. Okay, so now that our spline is basically done, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is actually turning our spline into 3D geometry. And this process is actually quite simple. You can see we have our geometry there. Okay, that's what we expect to see. Here, so I'll get out of vertex mode and I will go ahead and grab an extrude modifier and I'll extrude it up a little bit. Now, obviously I'm not, you know, it's 22 centimeters. That's pretty huge. It's uh, obviously not going to be what we're going to use for the final 3D print, but this is the basic uh, process for getting that extruded. Now I could technically print here, but it's, I won't because it doesn't give me a very nice looking model. So this concludes part one of this modeling tutorial. And the next tutorial, we'll be looking at taking this sword to a lot greater detail in terms of geometry. It'll be a more advanced geometric modeling tutorial that talks about how we actually can set up the sword for all the different textures that need to be applied to it and for solving some more complex geometric problems.